Said he computed quickly and said, that's 42,500 for a memorial stone. How big is it? She says, seven and a half carats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two buddies were up for a stroll one day. One had a Doberman, the other had a Chihuahua. As they sauntered down the street, the guy with the Doberman said to his friend, let's go to the restaurant and get something to drink. The guy with the Chihuahua said, we can't go in there. We, we got dogs with us. One of the donors said, just follow my lead. So they walked over to the restaurant, and the guy with the donor put on a pair of dark glasses and started to walk in the restaurant. The waiter at the door said, sorry, Matt, no cats allowed. The man with the donor said, you don't understand, this is my CNI dog. The waiter said, a donor pension? The man said, yeah, they're using them now. They're, they're really good. The waiter said, okay, come on in. The buddy with Chihuahua figured he'd try it too, so he put on a pair of dark glasses and started to walk in the restaurant. And he knew his story would be a bit more unbelievable. Once again, the waiter said, sorry, I don't know pets allowed. The man with the chihuahua said, you don't understand. This is my CNI dog. The waiter said, a chihuahua? The man with the chihuahua said, a chihuahua? A chihuahua? They gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> Exodus chapter 13, verse 3. This is, and Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you came out from Egypt and out of the house of bondage. For that by strength of hand the Lord brought you out of this place, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. <coughs> Today, church, like I said it's Pentecost Sunday, and we want to celebrate the church. And it's also Memorial Sunday, so we want to honor those in memory. You know, the Feast of Pentecost <clears throat> was held at the end of the wheat harvest, 50 days after the Passover. It was also used a commemoration of the giving of the law 50 days after the Exodus. And as the disciples continued to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the New Testament church, maybe they would have in view two prophecies which pointed to the writing of the law upon the hearts of God's men and of God's new covenant people in Jeremiah 31, verse 33, and also the place of God's Spirit within his people in order to enable them to keep the law. And before that day was through, they were also going to reap a, day of, a, a harvest of souls. You know, on that day, as the disciples were gathered, there were 120 of them in the upper room. And they were gathered, and they were in one mind and one accord. Listen, when the church of God gets in one mind and one accord, and we quit worrying about everything else around about us, you're going to see some miraculous manifestation of God's Spirit. Because when you put Him first, he will do what he says he does. Yes, amen. amen. And they were up there on the ex in the upper room, and they said that a cloven tongues as like fire fell upon them. They began to speak with other languages. Now, the language they began to speak was the language that people could understand. People that were there heard them and said, how can they be speaking in my language when they don't even know the tongue? And they began to speak in these languages, and they began to minister to the people. When the Holy Spirit came, and resided on them, church. It changed the church. Listen, before they went and hid, that before they were in fear, even Peter turned his back on Jesus. But after that, after that day that the Holy Spirit descended upon the church and filled them. And you know, in Pentecostal circles, we always talk about the filling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard somebody say this the other day, and I shared it Wednesday night, or a few weeks ago. Church, it's not that you get more of the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. But when you become filled with the Spirit, that's when the Spirit gets more of you. Amen. Stop and think about that. Yes. Oh, I want to be filled. Then open up and let Him fill you. Let Him have more of your life. Because, listen, the more the Holy Spirit controls you, the more God can do His will in our life. Amen. The yes. more God can further the kingdom of Amen? Amen? It's when we yield to him. So on that day, it was the birthday of the church. And we celebrate that day. We celebrate the day that the Holy Spirit comes. Listen, I'm praying that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to be like he said in, in Joel. It's going to be in every church, in every part of the whole world. You're going to see it, it, it takes the Spirit to bring unity in the body. In the flesh, we all got different ways of looking at things. We all got different opinions. But when you get in the spirit, 
It's only one Holy Spirit, and He's only going to lead you in one direction, and that's to glorify God. And yes. when you do that, you're going to see the manifestation of God's Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. And I thank God for that day that it happened. I thank God for the, the men and women that gathered and prayed and, and, and saw a oneness that come together. They were sharing everything in common. You know, a lot of churches, we, well, this is my people, this is my church, this is my way of doing things. And sometimes we get so afraid that some other pastor's going to come in or somebody might come and, and take our sheep. Listen, back then, all they were concerned about was glorifying God. Right. And they shared all things in common. And they went house to house. They didn't have church buildings. They went house to house and yeah. shared the good news with yeah. one another. And the Bible says that God added to the church daily. Listen, the church on one day went from 120 to 3,120 in one day. So when Peter stood up and preached, the same Peter that had denied Christ, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. That St. Peter stood up, and when he started, began to preach, 3,000 souls got saved at one time. Amen. Can you imagine 3,000 souls at one time? We rejoice when we get one soul. Amen. Angels of heaven rejoice yeah. when we get one soul. Amen. So 3,000 souls were saved on that day. And I thank God for the birth of the church. I thank God for those that there. And we always want to remember, remember the people in the Bible, you know, Thing was that the God put people in the Bible, He put their examples. You know the good thing about God too, He doesn't just put people in the Bible that all look good. Amen. He showed the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Yes. And he said those were examples for us to learn from. Yes. Sometimes we forget, oh I don't know what to do. We'll go back and find somebody that's gone through what you do. Amen. See what God told them yes. to do. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, Memorial Day is primarily a Given to remember those who have died. You know, there's loved ones, friends, or those who've died for their country. You know, in the beginning, it was called Decoration Day. And people would go out and they would decorate the graves of those who had fallen in their service for this country. And then it was changed to Memorial Day, church. And the Israelites, they were also admonished to keep their remembrance of various days and events in natural history. And I want to talk about some of the things that are worthy of our remembrance. One thing we should remember, the time and the place of our salvation. <coughs> Do you remember where you were when you got saved? Yes. Do you remember the day? That, listen, we should remember that. That's the most important, one of the most important days of our life. We got changed yes. from walking in death to walking in life. Amen? Yes. And stop back and think about that. <laughs> think about that day. That time. And how far you've grown since that day. You know, Colossians 1 13 says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. God has already translated this church. That day when you gave your heart to God, you invited him to be Lord and Savior. You're talking about that a while ago. There's a lot of people that want Jesus to be Savior, but they don't want him to be Lord. When someone makes you, when you make somebody Lord of your life, that means they're in control, not you. Amen? Amen. But he says he's already translated this from the kingdom of darkness. Satan has no power over your life except power, what power you gave him. Absolutely. Right. Amen. When Jesus defeated the devil, he defeated the principalities of power. He said it's finished. And in the second Peter it says he has given us everything that pertains to life and to godliness, past, past tense. We're begging God, oh God, do this. And God says, I already done it. Right. Now you believe me, instead of begging me, start believing me. So he's translated us out of the kingdom. The devil has no power over you, except sometimes we give it to him because out of ignorance. Sometimes we give it to him because of sin in our life. Sometimes we don't use the authority that God's given us. He, he has already translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Amen. So we need to start walking in that light. Amen? Amen. Do you remember where you were and when, when you got saved? You remember, I don't know about you, but when I did, that's like the world was lifted off my shoulders. I could not believe that God could forgive me. That's one of the biggest things the devil wants to tell you. You're not worthy. Right. Guess what? None of us are. Amen. That's right. Thank God that we have a Savior that was worthy. And thank God because of what He did, that makes you and I worthy. 
So when the devil gets on your shoulder and tells you, oh man, you don't deserve this, remind him, you know what, you're right, devil, for the first time in your life, you're telling the truth. I don't deserve this. But you know what, I've got to save you. So the price and he deserves it. So I receive that he did or he not save. You see, I remember when I got saved, because my mom wrote it down in the Bible she gave me. I remember the place I was at. I remember that I felt like I had no hope. I felt like things weren't going to change. And back then I was blind by the enemy. I felt like drugs and alcohol was my escape. I didn't realize. You know what? All they do is compound the problem. You can get high, you can get drunk, and it gives you a little peace for a little while. Which problems still come back. Amen, come back that's out. right. God was the only way out, church. Right. And there's some people say, you know, I just want to end it all. I just, I just can't deal with things anymore. Listen, suicide is never the answer. Amen. You're just trading a temporary hell for an eternal hell. Amen. 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 Yeah, but I just can't stand it no more. Well, just imagine this. This is tough here. But it's going to be a temporary. Eventually, there's going to come a day it's going to be over with. But if you take your life, then you may put you be putting yourself in a place that you're going to have to deal with that for all eternity. Think about that. Amen? Amen. Number two thing we should remember is remember the pit that we were in before we got saved. Psalms 9.15 says, The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid it and their own foot taken. Remember the pit that we were in. The pit, sometimes it was the pit that we created ourselves. Yes. Absolutely. By bad choices. Yes. By stinking thinking. <coughs> Amen? He said, remember that pit. Psalm 42 says, He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Remember where he brought you from. Amen. When you think it's so tough, you can't keep going on. <laughs> Remember what it was like before you found Christ. Amen. Remember what it was like when you were the only one, you were the only one that could do anything about your situation and you couldn't do much about it. You couldn't change. You, you couldn't pull yourself out of that pit. You couldn't pull yourself out of that circumstance, that situation, that relationship. But God did. Amen. Think back and remember that. Amen? Amen. Remember the choices that got you there. And how we're not going to make those choices no more. Amen. We shall also remember the place we were after our salvation. He said in Revelation 2, 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first work. Or else I will come to thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of the place, except thou repent. He said, remember, when you first gave your heart to God, remember what it was like? Then you were able to love people you didn't think you were going to be able to love. You even liked yourself for a change. That's one of the biggest things. We don't, when we're doing what we don't like ourselves. In our heart, that's not who we want to be, but we're caught into a pit, we're caught into a bondage, and we don't want to be there. Amen. Amen. He said, remember what that was like and return to your first love. You know, when you first got married, you first got in a relationship, man, you just loved that person. You couldn't get enough of that person. You know, man, I just want to eat him up. Six months later, you wish you had. <laughs> so he said, remember that first love. Remember what it was like when you first when you first fell in love with God. You weren't worried about finances. You weren't worried about what people said, what people did. You weren't worried. You were just in love with God. And I think the church needs to get back to that place. Amen. And treat God like a 911 rescue. Oh, when we got a tragedy, man, I'm in the phone booth calling 911. No. He wants a relationship with you. Well, that relationship is more important than anything else in our life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know how to say You know, you don't like people when they put 
what you ought to do. You like it when they make you feel like you're important. We need to make God feel like he's important in our lives. Amen? Amen. Even coming to church. When you come to church, you're not here to be entertained, church. I pray that you find good things about the church, but you're here to listen to the truth of the Word of God so that it can impact your life and change you. When you go out those doors, you'll be able to walk in the victory that Jesus Christ has already paid for. Some of us, we're just trying to win the battle, and God said, wait a minute, I already won the battle. All you've got to do is believe by faith and overcome the things that the enemy throws at you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Never ever fall upward, church. You always fall down. Amen. Yes. And some of us, we we've, we've done or we've got into some things that we can't seem to get past. Yes. Things that we keep trying to drag us right back into the pit. Yes. And Jesus said to remember, to repent, and to return. Remember where you came from. Repent. Of what you're in. Everything begins with repentance. Your salvation begins with repentance. You want to get back with God where you once was, that first love, begins with repentance. Now sometimes we treat that like a nasty word. But it begins with repentance. And then he said, return to me. If we don't repent, your sins will find you out, church. There's a guy at Walmart, he was shoplifting, he stole an alarm clock. But about the time he got even with the checkout count, the alarm clock went off. Your sins will find you out. Amen? We should remember our vows and our commitments, church. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 4 and 5. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay it. You're going to make a vow to God, you better fulfill it. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. And maybe you made a vow to God. Well, I'm going to teach Sunday school class. If you made a vow to God, you need to get in there and start teaching Sunday school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> or maybe you made a vow to God. Lord, I'm going to witness more this year. I'm going to do more for you. I'm going to be a better witness. And if we made that vow, we need to get the witness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> maybe you told God, Lord, I'm going to live up holy life. I, I want to get rid of those things that are tripping me up. You know, the Bible says there's a lot of things when we're on our course, on our walk with God, that trip us up. He said those besetting sins, those little things in our life, you'll be going along real good and all of a sudden they'll just trip you up. And you'll find yourself backing up instead of going forward. Amen? Amen. Maybe you made a vow to God. God, I'm finally going to answer the call I feel like on my life. I'm going to do what you told me to do. I've had other people tell me, now I'm going to do what you told me to do. Amen. Amen. We need to, make our, we need to fulfill our vows to our spouse. If we would do what we say we're going to do to one another, we could cut our divorce rate down in America. Exactly. Amen. Amen. We made a vow to love that person in sickness and in health, richer or poor, to honor I don't think America really understands what honor is. Amen. We said we're going to honor that person. In other words, out of all the whole world, you have chosen me. <coughs> then honor that person. Make them feel special in your life. You know, you wouldn't have husbands cheating on wives, wives cheating on husbands, if we would treat each other the way the Bible says we're supposed to treat each other. Amen. Yes. He said we're supposed to love our wives like Christ loves the church. <coughs> I don't know of a wife on this earth that couldn't get along with a man that's going to love her like Christ loves the church. Amen. And gave Absolutely. Amen. Yes. And that woman, amen. Amen. And that woman would have no, no problem submitting to that kind of authority. Exactly. And then we walk around like, oh, you need to submit to me. I'm the man of the house. Then treat her like God treated the church. Amen. You have to demand it. They don't want to do it. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> We made a vow to keep ourselves to one another and nobody else. You see, David got in trouble. He got to looking at a UFO. Unidentified female object. <laughs> he got himself in trouble, didn't he? Yep, most men do. 
We make vows to other people to pray for a certain thing. You have people that, well, I'll pray for you. But you know, eight out of ten times they don't. They think, well, somebody else is praying. I don't have to. If you told somebody you're going to pray for them, pray for them. Exactly. Do what you said you're going to do. We're Christians. Yeah. We're supposed to be above. We're not supposed to be below. We're supposed to be above. We're supposed to set the example. If I tell somebody I'm going to pray for them, I don't do it. It bothers me. The Holy Spirit won't leave me alone until I do. Amen. Amen. Maybe you made a vow to help people in need. We've got a pantry back there, and I meant to make an announcement. We need to start filling it back up. We've been helping people. But maybe you made a vow, and you want to help somebody. You want, you want to be that person that steps up and does something that makes a difference. Then fulfill that vow. When you do that, watch what God will do with you. Amen? We're all supposed to remember our brethren. Remember one another that you serve the Lord with. First Timothy 4, 6 says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. No, we're not in this by ourselves. We're a body. We're a family. And each one of us has different needs and different situations. Remember one another. Pray for one another. You know, when the Lord puts somebody on your mind, pray for them. You may not know what it is. Pray in the Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows yeah. how to pray. Amen. Yeah. First Timothy 4 it says, Bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. You'd be shocked the people that will do what they do to make themselves look good on the outside. And there's nothing wrong with that. The church, we need to make ourselves look good on the inside. Spend more time trying to build up the spiritual man and less time trying to build up our physical man. Amen. Amen. First Samuel 12, 23 says, More of us for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord and cease to pray for you. You told somebody going to pray for him, pray for him. Second Timothy 1, 3 said, I thank God whom I serve with my forefathers with spirit conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. I pray that as pastor of the church, as leadership of the church, that we're in your prayers night and day. Yes, absolutely. It makes all the difference, amen? amen? You know, and there was a time, listen, there was a time in life when people were concerned, genuinely concerned about the welfare of other people. I mean, think about the time. Used to, when somebody's barn burned down, they'd all, everybody come over, bring their mules or horses and the tools, and they'd rebuild the barn for them or rebuild the house for them. Then you get back to where we worry about what's going on in other people's lives and not just ours. I say this all the time. You take care of God's business and God will take care of your business. Amen. Amen. We need to remember the truth of God. John 14, 26, But the comfort which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remember whatsoever I have said unto you. He said the Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance. When you need it, it's like a computer. You put it in there, and when you need it, you can pull it out. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you in all truth. Whatever God said, he will remind you of that. Revelation 3.3, 3, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I'll come upon thee. He said, Remember how you heard it. How you receive it. And he said, Hold on to it. He said, I may come as a thief. Now, you know, God's not going to, He wants us to be ready at all times. Yeah. If somebody said, Well, Jesus is coming tomorrow morning, boy, we'd all get our acts together, wouldn't we? But God wants us to get our acts together every day because we Amen. don't know when He's coming back. <coughs> Absolutely. He said, You'll know the signs, but you're not going to know the day or the hour. Don't get discouraged. Don't faint in your mind. Well, I've served God and nothing's changed. You know, I say this all the time. It's more important to God what He does inside here than what He does out here. He can change all this out here, but if you don't let Him do what He needs to do on the inside, you're going to keep on making the same choices. You're going to keep on doing the same thing. 
keep making the same mistakes. Because when God does the work on the inside, and then he does the things on the outside, you are ready and you are prepared to be able to handle what God's trusting you with. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I know this may not be a preacher at this point, but it's something to take all Amen. Of yes, it and is. Apply in our life. Amen. We need to remember our parents. Ephesians 6 once says, oh, Children, obey your parents the more, for this is right. Why do we have so many teenage tragedies in the world? Yes. Because they've broken this commandment. Yes. There's no respect, there's no honor yes. for the mom and dad. Yes. And they said, Well, my mom and dad wasn't very honorable. He never said anything about what they were. He said, What you're doing, what I'm doing. Amen? Amen. Psalm 71, verse 9 says, Cast me not off in the time of old age, forsake me not when my strength faileth. When we needed them, they were there for us. And now when they need us, we need to be there for them. Amen? Amen. We need to remember our soldiers and our heroes. You know, my dad taught me that a personal military uniform was a hero. And I still honor that today. The Jewish soldiers were honored as they returned from battle. Just David had slain his 10,000. When protesters speak out against our military, I think to myself, they need to see some blood spilled. Amen. Maybe their own. Yeah. I can't stand it when people make light of those who fought for our country. Amen. They're war heroes, church. Yes, and we need to remember how this country began. What makes America great? Unless we lose it. A lady noticed an old happy man sitting on his porch. Excuse me, she said, I just couldn't help noticing how happy you look. Tell me, what's the secret of your long, happy life? Well, the man responded, I eat fatty foods, never exercise. I smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. I drink a case of whiskey a week. Wow, the woman said, how old are you? 28. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen, see my heart and what I'm fixing to say? Is this a heavy to some people? Controversial to some people? But see my heart. I'm not against immigration, nor do I hold a grudge against anybody who's seeking a better life by coming to America. In fact, our country's population is almost entirely compromised of descendants of immigrants. However, there are a few things that, that those who recently come to our country need to understand. First of all, it is not our responsibility to continually try not to offend you in any way. This idea of America being a multicultural community has served only to loot our sovereignty and our national identity. As Americans, we have our own culture, our own society, our own language, and our own lifestyle. This culture, called the American way, has been developed over centuries of struggles, trials, and victories by millions of men and women who have sought freedom. So many fought, bled, and died at places like Bunker Hill, San Juan, Iwo Jima, Norman, Korea, Vietnam, and other places. We speak English, not Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, or Japanese, or Russian, or any other language. Therefore, if you want to come part of our society, learn our language. Amen. Yes. Amen. In God's church is our national motto. This is not some off-the-wall Christian right-wing political slogan. It's our national motto. It's engraved in stone in the House of Representatives, and our capital is printed on our currency. We adopt this model because Christian men and women on Christian principles found this nation, and this is clearly documented throughout our history. It is appropriate for our model to be inscribed on the halls of our highest level of government, and it's certainly appropriate for this play on the walls of our school. Amen. God is our pledge, our national anthem. Amen. Amen. Nearly every patriotic song and in our family document, we honor his birth, his death, resurrection as holidays, and we return to him in prayer in times of crisis. If God offends you, then I suggest you consider another part of the world as your new home, because God is part of our culture, and we're proud to have it. Amen. Amen. Yes. We are proud of our heritage and those who have honorably defended our freedom. We celebrate Independence Day, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and Flag Day. We have parades, picnics, and barbecues, and we proudly wave our flag. 
As an American, I have the right to wave my flag, sing my national anthem, quote my national motto, cite my pledge whenever I were or wherever I choose. If the stars and stripes offend you, or you don't like Uncle Sam, then you should seriously consider the move to another part of this planet. Amen. The American culture is our way of life, our heritage, we're proud of it. We're happy with our culture, have no desire to change, and we really don't care how you did think where you came from. We are Americans, like it or not, this is our country, our land, and our lifestyle. Amen. Yes. Our First Amendment gives every citizen the right to express his opinion about our government, culture, or society, and we will allow you every opportunity to do so. But once you're done complaining, whining, and griping about our flag, our pledge, our national motto, or our way of life, I highly encourage you to take advantage of one of our other great American freedoms, the right to leave. Amen. 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 Listen, don't send me negative comments. I believe in America. God made it the greatest nation on earth. We should not turn our backs on him or go after another God. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Another thing we need to remember is the old path. Jeremiah 6, 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways of sea, and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein. And you shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. Listen, I'm not talking about the old sweet by and by. I'm talking about the best way to happiness. The old path. This verse says, where is the good way, and walk therein. You shall find rest for your soul. That's where it's at, church. That's where you're going to find happiness. Ronald Reagan said the word of God causes America to be great. And once we take the word of God out, America will cease to be great. Where are the old path? The old book. It's not old fashioned. It's still current today. If you want to change, go ahead, but not me. I'm going to follow the principle that was written in this book. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to stick with the old path. I'm not going to join some group that requires a fake emotional experience. I'm going to stick with God. And doing so, we have access to all the fullness of God there is. And I don't have to fake it to make it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the old time religion, this new stuff is sending people to hell at race car speed. You can't follow this new stuff and go to heaven. The new stuff is all about making you feel good. Raising you up. It's all about self. It's all about being politically correct. That old time religion condemns Christians partying six nights a week and then singing in the choir on Sunday morning. Boy, I got quiet on that one, didn't I? <laughs> the old country church, on Sunday night, someone would light a kerosene lamp. Everyone would gather around the piano and they'd sing for 45 minutes. Then the preacher would come and preach for an hour about the awfulness of sin and the horrors of hell, or maybe the sweetness of heaven. Listen, I don't know about you, but that old time religion was good enough for you me. You bet Amen. it was. Amen. 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 The old hymns. Listen, I like the new songs. I like the worship courses. I feel sorry for churches that have forsaken the old hymns. We need to sing more about the old rugged cross. Amen. We need to sing about nothing but the blood. Exactly. We need to sing at the cross. We need to sing about the blessed assurance, church. Yes. And we've absolutely. got to awaken those things. Yep. Amen. In 2 Timothy 3 14 says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. We need to remember the old doctrines. Remember about the blood atonement. Christian holiness, the second coming, the baptism by immersion, the virgin birth, the inspiration of the scripture. <coughs> need to remember about heaven and hell. They are real places, church. Amen. Yes. And one day you're going to find out how real they really are. Right. Right. And you're not going to be able to blame anybody. If you end up in heaven, it's because of what Jesus did. Amen. If you end up in hell, it's because of what we did. Yeah. Amen. If so, oh, how can a loving God send somebody? A loving God doesn't send you to hell. You go to hell because you reject everything this loving God has done. Amen. Amen. He said it's not my will that anybody should perish. It's not God's will that any. He said, I created the hell for the devil and his angels. He didn't even create it for mankind. Amen. We're not even supposed to be there, but we go there because we reject everything that he's done for us. 
Sometimes we get so wrapped up in life and we forget what He's done for us. Exactly. Some of us, we wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for God. Yeah. Some of you wouldn't have the, the, the relationship you have today if it wasn't for God. Some of you wouldn't have the job you have if it wasn't for God. Amen. Your family wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. Amen. 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 We need to remember the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yes. Yeah. Nehemiah 4.14 says, I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not you afraid of Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brother and your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. Remember, you're not in this by yourself. You're not walking this alone. Remember who's with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you feel like he's a million miles away, he's not. That's just our feelings, church. He said, I'm right here. I'm with you. Everywhere you go, you take me with you. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, I just don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to pray. Before when tragedy hits, man, all of a sudden we got all the time in the world. Yes. Amen. Put God first. Make time for Him. And you watch, you know what? There was a time in my life that I worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week. And I never had time to do anything. And God got on to me about that. Because I was trying to make everything work. And He got on to me. He said, just put me first. Just put me first. You know what? I did what God said, and I began to put him first. All of a sudden, I didn't have to work 14-hour days to make ends meet. All of a sudden, I had time to go fishing. I had time to spend with my family. Why? Because I did what he said to do, church. Some of us, we're struggling so hard, and we're just, we're so burdened down. We're so weary. We're so tired because we are trying to do it ourselves instead of listening to what God's telling us to do and trust him by putting him first. Amen? Amen. Remember him in your thoughts. How much time during the day do we really stop and think about God? He should be on our mind all the time. We're, we're supposed to be listening to the Holy Spirit. Well, I have to work. He didn't say you didn't have to work, but you can still think about God. Right. That's you right. can still be a light in your workplace. Yes. Amen? Amen. Remember his mercy and his goodness. Remember his dying love. He said, Father, forgive him. He could have said, Father, get him. <laughs> but he didn't. He said, Father, forgive him. <laughs> Even when we don't deserve forgiveness, he still forgives us. That's right. Remember his call. He said, come unto me. Yes. You are heavy laden. Amen. You are burdened. You are tired. Yes. You feel like you can't put another step in front of another. What did he say? Go. He said, come, come unto the Lord. me. Yeah. And he said, I'll give you rest. Yes. For your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen? Amen. He also gave us a charge. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. How much witnessing are we doing? When's the last time you led somebody to the Lord? I don't know about you, but man, when you lead somebody to God, that you can't put it in words how you feel. Amen? Amen? You just snatched that person up out of hell's fire. How much witnesses do we do? Now listen, witnesses, Kathy was talking about this one. Witness is not always with your mouth. I do. It's with your actions. Yes, it is. It's showing the love of God. It is, I know. Brother Rob was talking about it this morning about people helping when he first got saved. You know, like, why are you doing that? Because that's what God tells me. Yes. Amen. The Bible said we're going to be partakers of his nature. He doesn't just love, he is love. Yes. 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 We forget all these things, church. He said, remember my commandments. If you love me, you keep my commandments. When we show our love by being obedient, yes. by doing what he asks us to do, and when we're obedient, it brings victory, it brings blessing. I'm almost through for those watching the clock. Judge chapter 2, Judges chapter 2, 10 says, And also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. 
Think about the past generation. We were raised in a generation where they had morals, where we were taught exactly. about Christ. We were taught about church and the importance. But this new generation, they've forgotten or they've never known those things. And we're getting farther and farther away as a nation, away from God. Amen? A Santa Fe minister said it best. He said, we've created a culture that does not value life, that does not honor God, that does not respect authority. We are reaping the consequence of those actions, and that's not going to be reversed by a security guard or a metal detector. The long-term goal is to change our hearts. We're allowing a culture to raise our kids. Absolutely. That's a lot of truth, church. I'm going to close on this. Second Chronicles 7.14. If, that's a big word in If my people who are called by my name, are we called by his name? Do people consider us disciples or followers of Christ, a Christian? He said, Call by my name, humble themselves. When's the last time we come before God and we can give him our wish list and just humble ourselves before him and say, God, I just want to be, I just want to spend some time with you. I'm not asking for anything. I just want to bask in your presence. I just want you to love me and I want to love on you. He says, humble himself and pray. When's the last time we prayed for somebody other than us? Amen. Our poor no more. And pray and seek my face. We talk about this all the time. People are always seeking God's hand. Lord, I want you to bless me. I want you to heal me. I want you to prosper me. I want you to protect my kids. But God says, seek my face. God wants you to get eye to eye with him. He wants a relationship with you. He wants your heart. He wants that intimacy. Amen? He says, seek my face and turn from their wicked way. We've been going this direction. And God says, it's time for us to turn and go going this direction. Yes. Listen, we've been going in this direction, complaining about everything in our life, and it's not been working, and yet we keep going this direction. Stop and think, duh, if it's not working doing this, then you need to change something. Right. Come around, start going in a different direction, give God a chance, and watch what will happen. Amen? Amen. 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 You can turn from your wicked ways, then, after we do these things, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If you need your land healed, you need this land healed, you need your family healed, you need your community healed, your job, your business, you need those things healed, then do what he says. He says, if you do these things, he said, then, he didn't say maybe, he said, then I will turn this thing around and I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Amen? Church, I give us a list of things to talk about this morning to remember. Amen. Don't walk out of here and forget, well, I don't know what the pastor preached on. Remember some of the things that we've forgotten, some of the things we've taken for granted. It's a privilege to get up this morning and decide where you want to go to church. But I'm hoping something touched our hearts this morning. And we're going to be different. We're not going to take things for granted. We're not going to take one another for granted. And most of all, we're not going to take God for granted. Amen. He's done a lot for some of us. Yes, I told you before, I went around when I first got saved and I dragged my poor mama all over the country. I wanted to go wherever God was, I wanted to find this God. And I had six different ministers tell me the same thing. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd be dead. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be up here preaching this morning. Amen. If you want to see me, you'd have to come out to the grave Six different people tell you that. You know, the old saying that somebody calls you a horse's butt, that's one thing. If four or five people call you a horse's butt, you better buy your saddle. <laughs> you know? yeah, six different people tell you the same thing. That got my attention. And I hope I got your attention this morning. Amen. Amen. Come back next Sunday and I'll rip snort and we'll tear this place apart, okay? <laughs> This morning, I want to touch your heart. So I want you to stop and think. 
appreciate one another. Joy thought when was wrong with me yesterday. I couldn't tell her how much I loved her enough. I couldn't hold her and touch her enough. Time is short, church. Don't take things for granted. Remember what's important to you. Remember who's important to you. Amen. Begin to do something about it. Amen. Amen. Most of all, show him how it's important. Amen. Give God praise and glory. We're going to play a song. I want you to listen to the words of this song. And let it minister to your heart. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. And then we'll have an altar call and we'll pray. And we'll be dismissed. There'll be no service this tonight. <coughs> I'll let you know ahead of time. No 